this is lecture number 28 of the course MET 14 Fluid Mechanics 2 and uh, the first lecture of this week. We have already uh, have done the concept of boundary layer uh, in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, today we will uh, do the order analysis, uh, order of magnitude analysis or scale analysis sometimes called. Uh, we will apply that to the uh, flat plate case uh, and uh, uh, we will end up with uh, uh, the expression for boundary layer thickness which is a function of an Reynolds number and we have already seen it in the uh, previous lecture that uh, as the Reynolds number increases the boundary layer thickness uh, uh, decreases. So at that time, uh, this time we will do it using the uh, order analysis. Um, and, and then we will be able to work out the expression for the wall shear stress on a flat plate using the scale analysis and we can work out the Darcy friction coefficient or sometimes it is called as skin friction coefficient we can work out. Uh, okay, so the idea behind scale analysis or order of magnitude analysis is, 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 is a technique uh, which is used in mathematical sciences. Uh, when we have uh, 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 equation comprising uh, several terms and uh, we need to simplify the equations. Uh, uh, the first thing is always what we do is we uh, have so many terms in that equation but what we do is uh, we uh, approximate the magnitude of each and each and every individual term. Uh, and then we see how these terms uh, are comparable with other terms in the equation. For example, uh, let's say there is an equation of motion given here and uh, somewhat looks similar to your uh, 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 Navier-Stokes equation but uh, the left hand side you have some initial term and uh, 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 that is having the local uh, material derivative having a local variation as well as convective acceleration. So, and then you have some energy terms like kinetic energy is due to the velocity component in x and y and this is a pressure related term and this is a, x, a gravitational term and uh, this is some due to that rotational effect uh, and due to this Coriolis forces I mean I don't, no need to go into that what these terms are but what we do is uh, when we analyze these equations and what we learn is uh, for example, excision due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second square, so its order is order of 10 to the power uh, 0, 10 to the power 1 rather. So, uh, and the pressure gradient term is of the same order and uh, uh, the inertial terms uh, 10 to the power minus 7, 10 to the minus 15. 5 and this is 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 15. So we just work out the magnitude of their order depending upon the magnitude of the approximate quantity like what is the free stream velocity, what is the length and what is the magnitude in the uh, z direction of the velocity. W is actually in the z direction. So after working out with comparison with we learned that these are smaller quantities. 10 to the minus 15 is much smaller, minus 7 is much smaller. So these two quantities are uh, somewhat comparable. So in, after simplification, by neglecting the small terms, uh, we end up with the relation that the pressure gradient in the Z is actually this so-called hydrostatic pressure and uh, which is uh, uh, as you go to the uh, depth in the Z direction, the pressure changes. So which is uh, uh, if you integrate that you will be able to get the same expression pressure equals to rho gh. So this is a technique by which instead of using this equation which is uh, formidable and uh, having so many terms so by taking that uh, order analysis by comparing the magnitude of each term uh, in that equation we end up with the simplification of that equation. And uh, today we will do it apply it to the flat plate case. So just consider you have a laminar flow, steady laminar two dimensional flow and incompressible flow takes place over a flat plate. So once fluid enters uh, at the edge of the flat plate uh, at the leading edge when x is 0, uh, it is all uniform velocity and due to the viscous effect because viscous effect has been uh, taken into an account and due to that viscous effect the wall shear stress. Uh, uh, is present at the wall and uh, the boundary layer develops and there is a velocity profile associated. 
So um, uh, we know that uh, velocity at uh, when your y is zero, the magnitude of the velocity is zero. And when it is approached to that uh, so-called region in which the viscous effects are dominant, we call it a boundary layer region. Uh, uh, the 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 local velocity is approaching towards the free stream velocity. So uh, and delta is we already have learned delta is the vertical distance uh, and which is a function of uh, x. So when x is zero, the thickness is zero. But when x increases, uh, the thickness grows. So that is actually the growth of the boundary layer thickness. So what we do is uh, there is a problem at hand, and what we do is uh, we apply the um, governing equations of that fluid flow. So we know uh, the continuity equation uh, is two-dimensional. Steady state continuity equation is this: having the velocity, having a component in x and component in y. So uh, what? Uh, and then we have an x momentum equation. And keep in mind, in this x momentum equation, you have this inertial term. This is the pressure gradient term, and this is the viscous term. So, uh, for simplicity, we have actually neglected the gravitational force uh, in that governing equation as it is given. So, this is would be the y momentum equation. Uh, uh, so, these three equations uh, would be your set of governing equations, and uh, um, you have three unknowns like u, v, and p. Uh, so you need to work out uh, this u, v, and p once you solve these equations. So what we are doing is uh, in order analysis we are not solving them, but we uh, through order analysis we establish relationship between them. So let's see how we proceed. So as we know, uh, one of the important uh, concept of boundary layer is uh, uh, this is actually called the length of the flat plate. And uh, this is actually the boundary layer thickness. Delta is a boundary layer thickness. And we know from the order analysis uh, that the magnitude of this boundary layer thickness uh, at uh, higher Reynolds number is very, very small compared with this uh, length of the flat plate. What you call it a characteristic length. L here is the characteristic length, which is actually the length of the flat plate. So this important fact we know from our uh, boundary layer theory, what uh, Prantel has suggested that uh, uh, there is a region close to the wall where viscous effects are significant, which is much smaller uh, uh, compared with the characteristic length. So we can have, uh, we know that in general the velocity distribution is a function of uh, uh, x and y, uh, uh, the two space variables. There is no time variable because it's a steady state problem. So here, uh, uh, the boundary layer thickness, uh, we have uh, already mentioned that uh, from uh, the uh, Prantel, what the concept Prantel has introduced, that this thickness is much, much smaller. So delta upon L is a number which would be much smaller than the 1. So what we now see, we now look closely the, the, the parameters involved in our governing equation. For example, u, u is the x component of the velocity. So what will be the uh, magnitude of that u? The order of u would be because minimum value of u would be 0 at the when y is 0. So that is at the no slip boundary condition. And maximum value of u would be the u infinity. So the value of u ranges from 0 to u infinity. So what we can say that within this boundary layer, uh, at the close to the edge of the boundary layer, the local velocity would be approaching towards the uh, free stream velocity. So we can say that the magnitude of u would be of the same order. This tilde sign is representing order. So u, you should read like that, u should be the same order of u infinity. u infinity here is the free stream velocity. Now look at the order of uh, uh, the uh, space variable x. So when you are here x is 0, when you are here x is L. So x, the value of magnitude of x can range from 0 to L. So uh, we can think of uh, the order of x would be equal to the uh, length of the flat plate. Okay, then now the question comes what will be the order of uh, uh, the variable y. So variable y as you know within this boundary layer y minimum value of y would be 0 and uh, maximum value of y would be equal to its uh, boundary layer thickness delta. Uh, so order of y would be delta.
Okay, the, now the question is uh, what should be the uh, 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 order of, uh, we know the order of u, we know the order of x, we know the order of y. From this continued equation, we can easily work out, without even solving that equation, we can easily work out the order of the V component of the velocity. So, what we learned here is from continuity equation, we know dava V by dava Y is equals to minus dava U by dava X. So, I know the order of U, just substitute the orders here. So, order of V, I am interested in working out, order of Y is delta, order of U is U infinity and order of X is L. So, we can uh, write like that. So, what we learned here is the magnitude of V is an order of uh, uh, U infinity times delta divided by L. So, from our boundary layer theory, we know that delta over L is much, much smaller number because delta is much, much smaller quantity compared with L. So, what we can conclude from this uh, boundary layer assumption that delta over L is uh, much much smaller than L. So, what we can here assume that uh, uh, the V component of the velocity because delta over L is a small number and if you uh, let us say 0 0.001 this number. So, you multiply U infinity by 0 0.01 your velocity of magnitude uh, in the y direction would be much smaller than the uh, free stream velocity. So, we can conclude from that theory uh, uh, from this order analysis that the v component, y component of the velocity that is v would always would be much much smaller than the magnitude of u infinity. So, even without solving what we have learned that the magnitude of v uh, would be much much smaller than the magnitude of the free stream velocity. So, what we have done is just apply the uh, uh, order analysis to the terms involving this continuity equation. Okay, now we can work out things with x momentum and y momentum equation as well. So, let us say for x momentum equations, you have several terms involved. Uh, we know the order of u, we know the order of x, we know the order of v, we know the order of y. So, uh, now what we do is, uh, one by one what we do is, first we compare the initial inertial terms because you have... Uh, uh, left hand side you have inertial terms, two inertial terms. So, the first inertial term is u times dava u by dava x. So, the order of u would be u infinity. So, here also the order u is there. So, order of u infinity would be u infinity and order of x would be L. So, the first inertial term would be an order of u infinity times u infinity would be u infinity square over L. Okay, now look at the order of the second inertial term which is uh, v times uh, dava u by dava y. We know the order of v already worked out from the previous slide that u infinity delta over L is the order of v and order of u is u infinity and order of y is delta. So, delta and delta cancels out. So, what we end up with u infinity square over L. So, what we learn, what conclusion we can draw from this order analysis for the inertial term that both the terms, inertial terms first and second are of same order. So, this is the conclusion we draw that both terms are of same order. So, uh, we, there is, uh, there are two terms and both terms are of same order. Okay, now we analyze, uh, we have uh, viscous terms, this is a viscous term, so we analyze now the viscous terms in x momentum equation. So, the first viscous term is dava square u over dava x square. So, the order of u is u infinity and order of x is L. So, the order of the viscous term would be u infinity over L square. So, and similarly we work out the order of the second viscous term which is dava square u over dava y square. So, order of u is u infinity and order of y is delta. So, well, what conclusions you can draw about both terms of the uh, x momentum equation? Which term is greater? Uh, the first term or the term with the derivative of y? Because y is the delta is smaller. So, it means the smaller quantity the dominant take the square. It would be much smaller and if you divide that quantity it would be much bigger. So, what we conclude that the second viscous term u infinity over delta square is much much bigger than the first viscous term of x. So, that is what we can conclude because we know that the delta is much much smaller than L. Just the fact from this boundary layer uh, theory 
that y delta is a boundary layer thickness which is uh, very very small compared with the characteristic length of the flat plate. So we can conclude here in that x momentum equation uh, there are two terms uh, uh, the first term and the second term but we know that the second term is more is much much greater than the first term. So what we can do is we can ignore that first term. So we can uh, simplify our x momentum equation so in and we will see it later that this term can be ignored compared with this term so because the term with the derivative of y is much much greater than the term with the second order derivative of x. Uh, okay, now look at uh, the same thing apply the y momentum equation so we have y momentum equations looks like this. Uh, uh, just compare first the initial term of y so this first term is u having order of u infinity v is order of this so you simplify and you learn that uh, u square infinity delta over l square is the first inertial term in the y momentum equation second uh, inertial term in the y momentum equation would be that uh, v is an order of this so v so you simplify all these terms so what the conclusion you can draw that both term in the y momentum equations are of same order because they have the same uh, order. So uh, uh, we cannot ignore both of those terms in a sense that both are of same order. Okay now look at the viscous term in the y momentum equation. So viscous term is uh, dou y square v over dou x square and dou y square v over dou y square. So first term is dou y square v over dou x square. So here order of small v is u infinity delta over l and order of x is l. It would be l square. If you simplify, you end up with the uh, uh, delta u infinity over l cube. Uh, I have just put in terms of delta over l square so that I can uh, make certain conclusions. Uh, similarly, uh, what I can do is uh, just second viscous term, uh, second viscous term is dou y square v over dou y square. Uh, so v uh, is u infinity delta over l and y is delta. So you simplify. Okay, now you compare these two viscous terms. So what we can notice here, because uh, here u infinity over l, here also u infinity over l. Here delta is in the numerator, here delta is in the denominator so which term would be bigger because delta is in denominator if you take a reciprocal it will be much bigger number so we can say that the second viscous term of y is uh, much bigger than the uh, viscous term in uh, x so dou y square v over dou y square this term is more significant compared with this term in uh, second order derivative of x as you employ the uh, order of uh, analysis of this uh, uh, boundary layer concept that delta is much much smaller than L. Okay, now uh, we can uh, play with the, because we have already done uh, order analysis for continuity, continuity momentum and uh, x momentum and y momentum equations but we are now can compare the inertial term with the uh, pressure term or pressure term with the viscous term. So now what we do is we uh, compare the pressure term with the initial term in x and y. So e because as I know the both terms are of same order so whatever the term I take uh, I can compare the uh, order of uh, with this pressure term. So now let's see your pressure term is uh, having component like uh, because dava p by dava x if I multiply on the other side it will be rho times q times dava. So now I am comparing uh, only this uh, pressure gradient. So pressure uh, gradient would be uh, rho times uh, u, rho is just brought on this side rho u and dava u by dava x. Okay, rho is a material property and u is order of u infinity and here u is also order of u infinity, x is an order of L. So this pressure gradient would be uh, R u infinity square over L because u infinity multiplied by u infinity would be u infinity square. Uh, similarly worked out the pressure gradient uh, in the y momentum equation. So as I know the pressure gradient in y would be rho times this thing. So rho times uh, and as uh, you know both the initial term in x and y momentum are of the same order. So whether I take this term or whether I take term its order remains the same. So I just take the first term 
and here you see uh, u is order of infinity v is order of this so what you can draw that conclusion as far as the pressure gradient in x and pressure gradient in y is concerned because you have a term like rho u infinity a square over l here and here is the multiplier is 1 and here is the multiplier is delta over l as i know delta over l is a number which is much much smaller than 1 and here is a multiplier 1 so this uh, term in the uh, in the y direction the pressure gradient is uh, we can conclude that the pressure gradient term in y is much much smaller than the pressure gradient in the uh, x direction so this is what we can conclude that the pressure gradient in the y direction is um, uh, um, uh, much much smaller because delta over l is a number which is much much smaller than 1 so uh, this term is uh, pressure gradient in the y direction as i move in the y direction what uh, pressure changes i experience that would be much much smaller than as i move in the x direction because uh, fluid is flowing in the x direction and so the this is uh, what we can conclude but uh, from this equation what we learned is mathematically these are all partial derivatives it means uh, here the pressure distribution is a function of both x and y coordinates so here at this point of time uh, we know that the pressure is only a f um, pressure is a function of both uh, space coordinates x and y okay what i do is now i do little mathematics here for example as i know pressure is a function of two variables x and y so the uh, from mathematics knowledge uh, the change uh, how much is the pressure change takes place would be depending on how the pressure change as i move in the x direction times dx plus how the pressure change in the y direction as i move in the y direction so uh, the uh, pressure change would be depending on these two terms uh, so this is the pressure gradient in x this is the pressure gradient in y so as i know uh, i can um, uh, different uh, write dx uh, in this form just uh, rewrite the same equation in this form so if you multiply that together you are going to get the same thing uh, here you see it is uh, dp by dx and here it is dava p by dava x they are two different things uh, what here uh, dp by dx suggests that pressure is only a function of x and our p by dava x suggests that pressure is a function of x and y okay now in this uh, mathematical equation which uh, uh, we just came from a simple fact that pressure is uh, a variable which is a function of two space uh, variables so the pressure distribution would uh, at, at any point in x and y there is certain pressure okay now what i do is uh, i know from my uh, scale analysis the order of y is delta and order of x is l from this flat plate case so dy upon dx would of an order of delta by l so this term in this uh, square bracket would be delta over l what i have done is substituted the order of uh, i know the order of pressure gradient in the y from the previous slide and this is a pressure gradient in x and i know the pressure gradient in y is uh, much much uh, uh, because this is smaller this is a bigger pressure gradient so pressure gradient in y is a smaller quantity so uh, i just substituted all those order terms uh, for pressure gradient in y and pressure gradient in x from the previous slide and y is an order of delta and x is an order of l so just simplification we learned uh, that the dp by dx is dava p by dava x so what we learned is delta over l is what a smaller number because delta is a smaller number and delta over l is much much smaller than 1 so if it is a much smaller number if you take the square then it is further smaller so what we can conclude here is from order analysis that dp by dx is of same order of dava p by dava x so once this equation is true we can say that uh, in this uh, boundary layer uh, flat plate boundary layer the pressure distribution within the boundary layer is only a function of x so uh, this is an important lesson we have uh, uh, worked out just an important fact that the pressure distribution is only a function of x not a function of x and y uh, just uh, employing the order analysis how powerful this uh, order analysis tool is okay now we have found that the pressure distribution within this boundary layer is only a function of 
as you move along the length of the flat plate that is in the x direction so uh, uh, as we already know so we can conclude that the pressure is only a function of x so pressure is no more changing as you are moving uh, in the vertical direction so uh, this is uh, an important fact so for example if you are at a position x1 within this boundary layer so this region is darker region is uh, represented a boundary layer region and outside that region is a is a free stream condition so uh, this equation suggests that at a particular location x1 as you move in the y direction pressure remains same similarly if you at a position x2 as you move in the y direction pressure is not varying within this boundary layer Uh, but pressure is varying as you move from in the x direction if you are moving from x1 to x2 but pressure is not varying in the y direction this is a very important concept so uh, what will be the pressure when your y would be approaching towards the uh, boundary layer thickness when y would be approaching towards the boundary layer thickness? so your local pressure uh, your local velocity would be approaching towards the free stream velocity and your local pressure would be approaching towards the free stream pressure so uh, 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 we can write it at a given location x uh, when i say at a given location x it means uh, 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 once uh, you are at the boundary layer your uh, local velocity is approaching towards the free stream velocity and the fluid is having no velocity component in the y direction so uh, pressure changes with x as i already know but since uh, at uh, in that y direction uh, uh, at a given location x uh, this pressure would approach towards the free stream pressure so we can say dp by dx actually would be the same as uh, dp infinity by dx so it means at a particular location this pressure gradient uh, uh even if i move in this x direction but uh, since at the edge of the boundary layer pressure is actually the same as the free stream pressure so this uh, fact is uh, uh, we already know that the free stream pressure is a constant value so uh, outside the boundary layer region or at the edge of the boundary layer uh, the pressure is uh, actually even not changing at the uh, as you are moving in x uh, we are talking about the free stream pressure because at the free stream pressure is same um, uh, uh, even in is not a function of x free stream pressure but pressure is a function of x uh, but free stream pressure is not a function of x so this is an important uh, uh, concept here we learned from this scale analysis that the pressure in the boundary layer is the pressure at the wall of the inviscid flow solution so inviscid flow solution means uh, we already know from our uh, prandtl theory that the region in which the, the viscous effluent is dominant are called the boundary layer region and outside that region would be considered as inviscid region and so the result of the potential flow theory would you work out would be applicable in this inviscid region outside the boundary layer so uh, and you know the pressure at the edge of the boundary layer uh, uh, and the pressure is not varying in y so whatever the pressure is at the edge of the boundary layer would be the same pressure uh, at at a, at, a, at a given location in x so uh, we can say this uh, the pressure in this boundary layer is actually the pressure whatever the so if the pressure here at the edge of the boundary layer is p1 so within the boundary layer the pressure will also be p1 so this important concept is so if the pressure at the edge of the boundary layer is p2 then within the whole boundary layer the pressure would remain the same and it is only just because of this fact that the pressure is no more changing in the y direction within the boundary layer okay now let's uh, look at the governing equations again so using this scale analysis what we have done is uh, uh we have learned these facts uh, we are applying the scale analysis and we learned that uh, the second order term of y is dominant in x momentum equation and similarly the dava square v over dava square is much much greater than the uh, dava square v over dava x square the viscous terms and uh, the two in these two viscous terms and the pressure gradient in the y momentum equation is zero here so this term is zero here 
and we know the pressure gradient in y is uh, uh, negligibly small compared to the pressure gradient in x so using that contributions uh, we can end up with the uh, continuity equation remains the same uh, but your x momentum equation i call it an x1 x1 is just because after employing the boundary layer uh, um, uh, uh, assumption that you, uh, delta is much much smaller than l so what you end up with you cannot ignore either of these terms because they are of same order and pressure gradient in x is uh, also there but uh, we have simplified our viscous term viscous term of uh, y is much much more important than the viscous term in x so this term is smaller so i have get rid of this so i have a simplified x momentum equation after applying the boundary layer concept similarly as i know the pressure gradient in y is uh, negligibly small is zero so how this term can be zero it is only zero when left hand side is uh, and this term is negligibly small and this term is zero then the pressure gradient would be zero so y momentum has been reduced to very simple dava p by dava y is zero uh, and we can further simplify we already have then that this uh, 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 boundary layer concept that uh, the the pressure within the boundary layer is uh, is changing with x but uh, since we know that the pressure is no more changing in y therefore we can say that whatever is the pressure within the boundary layer is actually the same pressure uh that is the bond at the edge of the boundary layer and we know uh, this pressure uh, at the edge of the boundary layer since pre uh, free stream pressure is a constant value so at the edge of the boundary layer uh, this uh, uh, free stream pressure is no more changing so uh, these two uh, simplifications uh, uh, would uh, uh, turn our uh, this set of governing equations into some uh, 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 your y momentum equation has been reduced to uh, uh, further reduced to uh, because as as you know pressure is uh, p and uh, now pressure is p infinity so your x momentum equation further uh, simplified because this term is much much smaller or is approaching towards zero so once uh, you are in the boundary layer then your x momentum equation is further simplified to this so you have only three terms in x momentum equation and this would be your y momentum equation and continuity equation remains the same so the advantage of this uh, order analysis scale analysis is our governing equations have been simplified so we can uh, we will try to solve that equation in this uh, later uh, in this uh, blaise solution okay this uh, powerful technique uh, uh, really help us in working out so many other things for example if you look at our simplified x momentum equation so what we have got rid of we got rid of the pressure gradient term and we got rid of the viscous term in uh, dava square u over dava x square term viscous term in x momentum equations but we retain both uh, inertial term which are of same order okay so now oh, i am in a position here to compare uh, uh, two types of forces this is inertial force this is viscous force and you know the reynold number is actually the ratio of uh, inertial force over the viscous force so now i am uh, using the scale analysis i am comparing uh, the inertial term versus the viscous term so earlier we have compare uh, both inertial terms and both viscous terms now we are comparing crossword uh the uh, left hand side and the right hand side right hand side of the equation uh the inertial term and the viscous term so you know the inertial term is u dava u by dava x so uh, i just have brought rho on the other side so it would be uh, uh viscous term would be mu over rho uh no mu over rho this is the viscous term and the corresponding uh, inertial term is this and uh, as i know there is an equal to sign it means they are of same order so what i need to do is now just substitute the order analysis u can range from 0 to u infinity so order of u would be u infinity and order of x would be l similarly the order of y would be delta so here it would be delta square 
so i have just substituted here and now i just make some simplifications because uh, uh, u infinity here and u infinity can cancel out so you only end up with one u infinity and so u infinity over l is the same order of mu over uh, density times delta square so if you just uh, um, uh, bring rho and mu on the other side so what do you notice here so uh, uh, this would be some not exactly Reynolds number Reynolds number is rho u infinity l over mu so l should be there so what I do is I multiply and divide by l on both sides so l is here and l is uh, uh, multiplied both sides by l so you would be l here and here it would be uh, uh, one l is here and uh, uh, this would be becomes l square so then this uh, term left hand side would be a reynolds number uh, where your characteristic length is l l is actually the length of the flat plate so your reynolds number would be an order of uh, l over delta whole square okay so you can write like this delta over l square on the left hand side it would be reciprocal of the Reynolds number so what you learned here is uh, uh, if you take the square and here it would be under root under root of 1 would be 1 so what we learned here is uh, that delta is a boundary layer thickness and L is the length of the flat plate this ratio would be an order of square root of the Reynolds number so instead of uh, because as I know the delta is a function of X so what I can do is uh, um, uh, we can say that if your Reynolds number is a bigger number, higher number, then your boundary layer thickness would be much smaller. And this is what we have already seen in the previous lecture as well. Now we have concluded the same fact by using the scale analysis. We learned this important fact that the boundary layer thickness is uh, uh, instead of uh, L you talk about at any distance X, your corresponding boundary layer thickness would be delta X. And your corresponding Reynolds number would be Rex. Here Rex would be rho ux over mu. So uh, this is an important lesson we learned uh, here that the boundary layer thickness uh, uh, grows as x increases. So it is directly proportional to x and it is inversely proportional to the Reynolds number. So once you have a higher Reynolds number, your boundary layer thickness decreases. Once you move from x equal to 0 to L, so x equal to 0, once you are at x equal to 0, your boundary layer thickness would also be 0. But once x increases, your boundary layer thickness also grows at a given Reynolds number. So this important uh, uh, qualitative result, uh, uh, last time we have seen it without mentioning, but uh, by using the scale analysis uh, uh, through governing equations, we came up to that conclusion that the boundary layer thickness is directly proportional to the distance x and is inversely proportional to the square root of the uh, uh, local Reynolds number. So this would be the characteristic Reynolds number because here x is L and here in this equation, this is the equation for Reynolds number. So R u x over mu would be this local Reynolds number. So local Reynolds number means at any value of x you have certain boundary layer thickness. So this important lesson we have uh, came from this uh, important tool called scale analysis. Okay, we can calculate the expression for the wall shear stress which is acting at the wall when your y is approaching towards zero because when y is approaching towards zero, uh, the the shear stress would be called as wall shear stress. So uh, if you have a knowledge of uh, u and y order, you can easily work out because wall shear stress is mu times order of u would be u infinity and order of y would be delta and uh, uh, just uh, making simplification so that you can uh, um, uh, multiply and uh, divide by rho and uh, uh, as well as by x so that you bring the whole thing into this form so that we can express wall shear stress in terms of Reynolds number so uh, what you learned here is your wall shear stress uh, would be uh, higher as uh, your Reynolds number increases, square root of the Reynolds number. And your wall shear stress uh, decreases as x increases. So if you look at the typical graph for wall shear stress, because once you are in the laminar region, your Reynolds number is low. Once you are in the turbulent region, your Reynolds number is high. So the first thing is x, you are moving in the x direction and if you are in the laminar region, 
so your Reynolds number is low and if x increases your wall shear stress inversely proportional wall shear stress decreases so as x at a given Reynolds number for laminar region as x increases your wall shear stress decreases and uh, uh, for uh, at a given x in this turbulent region when your Reynolds number increases your wall shear stress increases but as x increases further your Reynolds number your wall shear stress decreases so there is a typical behavior but keep in mind uh, to, uh, in this uh, today's analysis we have assumed that the flow is uh, laminar so we are only talking about this region which is uh, uh, very much uh, uh, the relation is available for the how the wall shear stress varies with the uh, distance from this leading edge uh, x as x change x x increases your uh, wall shear stress decreases so uh, this important result we came only best applying the uh, concept of uh, scale analysis and obviously we are talking about uh, um, um, uh, boundary layer uh, what is the wall shear stress within this boundary layer region uh, now we can uh, same thing we can do it for uh, friction coefficient so we know the friction coefficient is a ratio of the wall shear stress over dynamic pressure so as I know the scale analysis that the wall shear stress we already work out which is a function of uh, inversely proportional to x and directly proportional to the square of the Ren local Reynolds number and obviously half is uh, constant and rho is a materi uh, material value so only variable here is a u infinity square so you just simplify these two quantities uh, uh, the friction coefficient you learn if you just bring whole thing in the form of Reynolds number so both Reynolds number what you learn here is uh, the friction coefficient would be inversely proportional to the square root of the Reynolds number and that is what uh, probably you have seen uh, such a chart uh, in your uh, pipe flow problems uh, so called Moody chart where friction factor small f would be 64 over Reynolds number but we are talking about external flow that is a flat plate so your friction coefficient is uh, inversely proportional to your Reynolds number so this is this axis you have Reynolds number local Reynolds number so more the Reynolds number uh, then the friction coefficient decreases uh, but that is only true in this laminar region okay well, I mean there are some changes takes place in the transition region and uh, in this uh, so called turbulent region so higher Reynolds number up to 10 to the power 5 10 to the power 5 is something uh, Reynolds number which is a critical Reynolds number where the flow is laminar and you see the transition effect develops something in order of 10 to the power 5 3 into 10 to the power 5 where the transition takes place and then flow becomes turbulent and in turbulent flows the friction coefficient is uh, uh, also uh, inversely proportional to Reynolds number but uh, it depends upon the roughness of the flat plate if k is a bigger value so you have more friction and if k is a smaller value you have some less friction so very very high Reynolds number uh, the friction coefficient is not going to change but is something a function of roughness so higher the roughness higher will be the value of the uh, 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 friction coefficient so more the friction coefficient it means more would be the uh, 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 pressure drop is required forces the fluid to move over this flat plate so uh, now you see that with this order or scale analysis uh, uh, we don't have an equal to sign we have just uh, 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 relation between the friction coefficient versus Reynolds number or the wall shear stress which is a function of Reynolds number and uh, the local position so these uh, these uh, relationships we have developed uh, using that is kind of scale analysis and uh, after performing the Blasius solution we will be able to turn that uh, uh, order term into the equations so we will do it in the next class so we finish this lecture today uh, at this point